What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the best endgame, wand and dagger build in Throne of Liberty. So in this guide I will show you a fully max setup with the best possible tier 1 gear, traits, masteries, skill rotations and everything else. And the best part about this is that for every single build choice I will explain my reasons, also how and where to get this powerful gear. And just overall you will be able to see what a fully maxed tier 1 character will look like and what at the end game you can achieve as well. So if you want to use the best build in the game then let's get right into it. The setup is a support build that can still do big damage and is more oriented towards mixing melee and ranged playstyles. By us combining a mixture of survivability and damage with skills like the thunderclouds bombing and the swift healing we will be able to do both so deal huge amount of damage while keeping our teammates alive. Also, this build will require decent mana regen to perform well. So, to achieve the highest numbers possible, we'll need to use the right items and specializations. So, let's move over to the setup. For the choice of weapons, we are going with the dagger and the wand. And first of all, we have our skills. So, for defensive skill, we use the chaotic shield. While for active skills, we get the cleaving moonlight, shadow strike, inject venom, brutal incision, fatal stigma, touch of despair, Curse Explosion, Corrupted Magic Circle, Time for Punishment, Blessed Barrier, Swift Healing and Karmic Haze. As you can see from the gameplay, I don't have all of the same skill icons on my bar. It is because the skill icons will change depending on our specialization setup. So, Inject Venom will turn into the Lightning Infusion. Then Brutal Incision will turn into the Thunderclouds Bombing. Then Corrupted Magic Circle will turn into the Decaying Touch. Then the time for punishment will turn into enchanting time. Then blessed barrier will turn into the fighting spirit barrier. And finally the karmic haze will turn into the unlucky clock. Then for passives we want to go with the assassin's instincts. Murderous energy, wrathful edge, destructive thing, wrath's beacon, vampiric contract, devotion and emptiness and finally the noble revival. As for skill upgrade priority for active skills we want to mainly focus on the curse explosion. Cleaving Moonlight, Brutal Incision, Inject Venom and Swift Healing. While for passive skills we focus on the Wrathful Edge, Assassin's Instincts, Devotion and Emptiness, Wrath's Beacon and Murderous Energy. And then for the rest of your skills they're not as important, so just upgrade them as you progress through the game. Also remember to always upgrade all of your skills to blue first before moving on to the purple. Next we have skill specialization and for the cleaving moonlight we select the consecutive use and effect duration. Then for inject venom get the lightning infusion and mana cast reduced. Then for fatal stigma don't get anything. For curse explosion get all 3 so dark explosion, damage increase and focus target. Then time for punishment get the enchanting time. Then for swift healing and shadow strike don't get anything. Then for Brutal Incision get the Thunderclouds Bombing and the cooldown reduction. For Touch of Despair get Effect Duration and Curse. For Corrupted Magic Circle get Decaying Touch. Then for Blessed Barrier get the Fighting Spirit Barrier. And finally for the Karmic Haze get the Unlucky Clock. Next we have the Weapon Mastery. And this is how it should look like for the Dagger. So take a look at the middle and get everything from Silent Dash up until the buff duration. The next go to the bottom and get these three nodes. And then lastly go to the top and get that entire row up until the buff duration. And then again this is how it should look like for the wand. So very similar. At the start get everything in the middle starting with the pure healing up until the deep pain. Then next go to the bottom and get these three nodes. And now finally go to the top and get that entire row. Next let's take a look at our gear. And if you are looking for a full green or blue gear setup then I recommend for you to watch my previous build videos. So first off we are using Lecurious Wicked Thorns with traits like the hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. All gear should be at its max level and you can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Lecurious Covered Tome with the hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. You can also get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have Visor of the Infernal Herald with max health, melee evasion and ranged evasion. You can get it from the Dead's Abyss. 
Next we have Supreme Devotion with Max Mana, Mana Region and Debuff Duration. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have Phantom Wolf Tunic with Max Health, Ranged Evasion and Buff Duration. You can get it from the Tyrant's Isle. Next we have the Shadow Harvester Grips with Max Mana, Mana Region and Ranged Evasion. You can get it from the Temple of Slaughter. Next we have the Breaches of the Executioner with Magic Evasion, Ranged Evasion and Debuff Duration. You can get it by defeating the Abyssal Spectre. Next we have Subtons of the Field General with Max Mana, Ranged Evasion and Movement Speed. You can get it by defeating the Dark Wizard and the Berserk Dark Enforcer. Next up we have the Color of Decimation with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can get it by defeating the Kovazan. Next we have the Ancient Sarodome Abrasers with Max Mana, Mana Region and Debuff Duration. You can get it from the Tyrant's Isle. Next we have Amber Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can get it from Purple Armor Chests. Next we have Etched Alabaster Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost and Buff Duration. You can get it by defeating the Demon Hoof Shaman. And finally we have the Belt of the Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Butcher's Canyon. Last but not least, if at this current moment you only have blue gear then don't worry, because that gear doesn't really matter and you will soon enough start changing it for the purple pieces. The setup that I showed is the best current gear that anyone can farm, but no matter what gear you choose this build will still work fine, but the setup is just an example of what the best of the best items will look like. Next up let's take a look at our gear upgrades. This game doesn't have a very typical gear progression. So by this I mean that you will have to upgrade pretty much anything you get. So you'll go from grey to green to blue and finally to purple. No matter at which stage of progression you're watching this video, just keep upgrading your equipment to their max level. And then when you get better gear just transfer the experience from the old one to the new one. As for my gear recommendations, when you reach level 50, just farm accessible gear by doing open world dungeons. On top of that, all the purple gear that you don't use, you want to turn into lithographs and then sell them on the auction house. Last but not least, for your trades, just prioritize the ones that give you the highest damage. And don't forget that you can acquire new trades by using the trade unlock stone. Next up we have the stats and depending on your gear, you should adjust them accordingly. The goal for your endgame build is to reach 50 strength, 30 dexterity, 50 wisdom and 30 perception. All of these milestones will give us extremely high damage and healing capabilities. Next we have our guardian choice and this creature is a special transformation that can add offensive or defensive buffs to your character for 30 seconds. And for our build we have the two best choices. The first and most popular choice is the shade remnant steno. This guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. This is the best guardian for dealing damage. And for PvE, damage is all that really matters, so this is our best choice. But then the second option is also the Masked Warlock Dantalux. If you find that you and your party members are having mana issues, then take this one instead, because he will give you a huge amount of mana sustain. And now finally we have come to the gameplay, and I will give you two rotations, one for DPS and one for healing. So first off, we have our main DPS rotation which we start by using the lightning infusion, then enchanting time, then touch of despair, then shadow strike, then fatal stigma, then again the lightning infusion, then fighting spirit barrier, then cleaving moonlight twice, and then from here we just wait a second for the fatal stigma to explode. And then from here we continue with the thunderclaws bombing, then the touch of despair, then the decaying touch, then unlucky clock. And now we finally finish it off with a curse explosion. And from here we just rinse and repeat. The main idea behind this combo is to use buffs and DPS skills in between, while building up stacks and conserving our mana. We also want to use Touch of Despair every single time it comes off cooldown. And on top of that, always use the Shadow Strike or Cleaving Moonlight before the Curse Explosion, because this will proc our dagger passive for the highest DPS possible. And then finally, we only want to use the Cleaving Moonlight twice, because it will give us buffs only when it's active, so we don't want to use it for the last third time and deactivate it. And then on the other hand we have the healing, and this is less meant as a rotation, but more as what healing skills you should activate first and prioritize when your teammates get low HP. 
So we use the Bless Barrier, then the Swift Healing, and then finally the Chaotic Shield. Also, because of the Vampiric Contract passive, we will heal ourselves or teammates when dealing cursed damage to the enemies. The main objective behind our playstyle is to deal as much damage as possible, while also keeping an eye on our teammates, and when they start taking damage and going below about 70 or 80% HP, then we start healing them and that's about it. So, if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you are interested in more content, then check out my channel and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.